Hi, this is Conrad Zimmerman of Fish Shark Marketing. If you're a fan of the show, we hope you'll help support it with a small monthly contribution through Patreon. For less than the price of a barrel of monkeys, you can enjoy listening to us as we carelessly fling our crap around. Just visit patreon.com slash fishshark or click the big Patreon button at fishshark.com for more details. And thanks for listening. Uh, hey. No, I don't. Hi. I don't get it. Hi, Jim. Uh, why are you? Why do you look like that? Who's this, Jim? You aren't you, Jim? I. I, I oh I, no, I... sweet kitty cat baby. I'm Mister Meow. Oh. With a capital meow. Oh uh, no, this. This is a pitch. It's a pitch? That's what this... Yeah, this is a pitch. He's got something... Oh, you're something. damn right this is a pitch, sweet baby. I've got an idea to pitch to you all today. You'll get used to this. Uh, Jim, he he's method. And so whenever he comes up with an idea that involves some mascot character representation, he has to perform and absolutely refuses to acknowledge that he is who he is. But it's 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 beyond performance. He he actually he looks like a cat in a way now. He's, he's no, physically uh, changed. He's got this uh really really good makeup technician that he hires out for things. You'd be surprised. I love the energy in this room, my darlings. It makes me want to purr. <sighs> oh, my throat's really dry. Oh, yeah, let's see if we can't get you um, a saucer of milk, maybe? I'll take some milk. I'll take it in a tall saucer. Yeah, yeah, Craig, can we can get a... Yeah. yeah don't, no, don't, don't. Make that out like to that. Mr. Meow with a capital me. We wow. I don't care if he scratched you. Go, Just get him the saucer of milk. Mr. Meow? It's... So, okay, maybe... What's the hi, Mister Meow? What what are you pitching to us today? Hi there, Mister Paul. Sincere, do you mind if I call you Paul? It's just I know a Paulson, and he's a dog. And this cat don't swing with no dogs. You dig? Sure, that 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 would be perfectly fine. Thank you for joining us today. What are you here for? What can you show us? Well, let me tell you, sweet kitty cat, I am feline and feeling fine. I've got an idea to send to you all right now. Do you mind if I eat a biscuit right now? I don't mind at all. I... No, it's fine. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's really anything, anything we can do. We I just mean, watch him eat for a while. That's what we do. It'll, it'll, it'll pass. You know, it's just all part of the... So, Mr. Meow, yeah. tell us. Uh -huh. <sighs> Can you, Craig, Craig, where's that milk? Can you hurry? I've been really thirsty all day, and I think the biscuit was a bad choice. Here oh. we go. Oh. There's your, there's your milk, Mr. Meow. Get the fuck out of here. Milk. Let me lay this down on the ground floor and see if you can pick it up and run it all the way to the top of the building. How does that sound? Meow. I'm uh, very intriguing. Uh, please, uh, let us know why you're here. Have you cats heard of Benadryl? Sure. The yeah. medication? The, 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 the drug? That's exactly the kind of ring-a-ding-ding -ding I'm hoping you pick up on, my sweet little cherub-based boy, meow. Yes, I'm talking about Benadryl, uh, typically used to treat allergic reactions and all sorts of itchy skin disorders, but how about this? Did you know that Benadryl is edible? Uh, in pill form. I'm, uh, you, you can swallow it, it helps you get to sleep. Oh, I'm not talking about no pill chill i'm talking about the cream let's make this a dream the topical cream that on the outside of the package says for external use only oh for for itches 
I couldn't be more topical, babykins. Let me tell you a little bit about the secret of Benadryl that I've been learning this past weekend. Benadryl is the perfect morning supplement. Squeeze a tube of that down your pipes, and you're ready to face the day. So here's Mor my morning, proposal. Morning supplement? Oh, it's the supplement of your morning. Don't you worry about that, you sweet little nermal you. Um, okay, so you've, you're eating tubes of Benadryl. Let me lay it on you hard and fast. I propose that we go to as many Walgreenses as we can and buy out their entire stock of Benadryl. I'm talking Walgreens all over town. We deface those tubes with a permanent mark pen and call it Mr. Meow's Breakfast Paste. We sell that at twice the price, and we're talking pure profit, baby. So, have you, have you been eating the Benadryl paste, then? How about you feel my bicep and ask again? Okay. Oh, feels firm. Firm, right? Firm and hard. Firm like and the hard. foundations of a building. Concrete and steel. It's very strong. Is this from eating your paste? Absolutely, mon frere. I'm all about the breakfast paste that I've been squeezing down my neck. Every morning, one or two tubes kick off the day. Okay, that cannot be, that cannot be good for you. Oh, baby, you show me a bowl of Golden Grahams, I'm like, get those out of here, man. I'm okay with the breakfast paste. Sometimes I'll have it for lunch. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look up Benadryl here. You look it up all you need to, kitty cat. I, I think you'll see that this is a pretty sweet deal. I don't think, I mean, I think Conrad may have a point. You are very strong, but, I mean, it's a paste because you don't put that in your mouth. You put that on... A rash or a bump or, or some other uh, itchy part, not not down the throat, doesn't it? Does it numb your throat? How does it make you feel on the inside? I've I've been feeling dry. I don't think the biscuits have been helping. Yeah, side effects include dry mouth and throat, um, increased heart rate. Oh. oh yeah, my heart is working twenty four seven, baby. That's how I know this works. Oh yeah, yeah. Those those pupils are dilated. That's um... all the better to see you, you handsome devil. You. Let me, ask you. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you went to the bathroom? Let's see. I put down the fresh litter last week, and and it's still fresh. Okay. Fresh like my pastel blue suit. Do you it's like nice. this suit? It's a, it's um. Do you like how pastel special. it is? Yeah, I like it a lot. It's uh, it's all very pretty. It, how long have you been using kitty litter for a bathroom? Oh, I like you. If you were a mouse, I would just eat you up. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, is there any chance that uh, that this is side effects from the Benadryl? There's no known side effects to eating Benadryl. The no, there are actually there there are a lot of side effects to a lot of side effects to eating Benadryl. Um, well, why don't you try and enlighten me, Coolio? Because I'm going nowhere. Seriously, I well, can, I can't even piss right now. Yeah, Coolio, right. tell tell him about the side effects. Well, it's the the you know as I was saying the increased heart rate, tooth oh. dilation, uh, urinary retention, constipation, um, high doses. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah, this is not a pitch. Oh. He has just... Jim has just really, really horribly overdosed on on uh, Benadryl. <laughs> uh, he is he's hallucinating all of this. Huh. This is just a complete and utter psychotic break. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure it'll wear off. Or, I mean, I hope. I or hope not, I guess. Out. I mean, it's it's not a bad pitch. I see no. you're not quite sold on this idea. Um, I'm going to hand you over to my business partner, Taylor Swift, right about now. Taylor, you, uh, you tell him all about it. Oh, dear. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. See, see, she's much better at explaining this than I am. She, I don't see anyone. She sure is. She sure. She, no, 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 d- d- just, we're gonna have to ride this thing out. Uh, yeah. No. Oh, Taylor makes a Taylor makes a really good point. Uh, really, that now there's a person who understands uh, uh, how to communicate and uh, and carry across an idea, and I totally, totally see it now, Mister mm-hmm. Now. I mean, I, don't I, tell uh, her that I said this, but she's pro-abortion. I don't, I don't necessarily necessarily agree with that, but uh, I don't okay. think that you need to be completely politically aligned with the people you do business with. Right. Um, she's not here, though. She's she... not physically. She hates fetuses. She does. Okay, uh, we're just going to take you downstairs to Fist Shark Medical. And uh, maybe have Dr. Knight scream, pump, and or replace your stomach. Uh Uh-huh, that sounds really fun. Do you want some of my biscuits? They've been in my pocket for weeks. So yeah, no, I mean it's just it's it's stale, and mm-hmm. I I try to buy lingerie to sort of get things going again because you know after about one to two weeks you've pretty much seen all there is to see, and you nah. need to you get things sort of you know a little more interesting. Classic mistake, classic, mm-hmm. classic mistake. People buy into the lingerie thing; they think this is going to spice up their love life. Right? It's a little bit sexy. It's a little bit Red Shoe Diaries. Here's the thing, though. And, and let me uh, let me posit this to you and see if I'm right. Okay? Okay. You've tried it once. Once or twice. It may put a little pep in the, in the relationship temporarily. But that lingerie, now you think about using it, too much preparation. It spends most of its time in the drawers, right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. And, you know, she she doesn't want to put it on. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put mine on. Absolutely. It's a waste of... It ends up a waste of time because, ultimately, the stuff's going to end up taken off shortly afterwards anyway. Or if you keep it on, it just gets in the way of the sex. Right. Exactly. Lingerie, that, that is a mugs game. But I might have the solution for you because I've been working with the boys in the lab and we have come up with some, shall we say, answers to the problem. Answers to the problem of lingerie being complicated and difficult to use. Easy to use lingerie. How does that sound? Lingerie that you don't even have to think about putting it on. That's impressive because you know, I think part of the reason why it doesn't wind up being used more than the once, you know, like the one time when you give it to them as the gift, right? And then they immediately put it on and that's the only time you ever see them in it. I think that, you know, just the existential dread of having to go to the effort of putting that thing on again prevents it from being used. Exactly, exactly. So guys, let me... Let me play a little uh, mental game with you. I want you both, Conrad and Paul, I want you both to imagine a very sexy lady. Mm. Think of the sexiest lady you can imagine. Oh, Margaret Thatcher. Exactly. I'm talking about the Thatcher herself, right? She's there. She's nude. That's fine. But just imagine if, like, frilly French brassiere, we're talking the high-quality stuff, like... Like, not even Victoria's Secret. We're, we're talking Victoria's crawl space, where the bodies are. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Pair of, like, like, tight, tight knickers. Uh. Purple, the sexiest color, like a penis's head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thigh high with the, the, uh, with the garters. The thighest eyes. And the guardiest nice. garters. And that ship... Snaps on in a matter of seconds. What? There's no way. I've never seen anybody be able to get to a getup like that in under 15 minutes. You think I've just been to Narnia and back at such a wacky Seriously? idea? Well, how about this? I'm talking about magnets, my boy. Magnets? I've been working with Dr. Nightscream. This is one of three ideas we've got for the new Fistchuck line of ease of use lingerie. We get a series of magnets that end up uh, implanted within the human body. We're talking under the skin. It's a simple epidural procedure that takes a selection of magnets, pops them, one on each breast, one up the fanny, and then round the back right under the buttocks. 
The new mm-hmm. fish shark snap on lingerie comes complete with metal filaments. So you just snap those suckers on. Not even any need for complicated fiddly straps. It's like a slap bracelet. Sounds painful. They they put a magnet in the body of a person? Oh, it's it's 100% safe, comfortable. Um, It's actually something that people have been doing more with body modification. Uh, The only issue is the risk of infection, which at our lab is higher than most, you know, quote-unquote, real medical facilities. Um, But, you know... But because we know that, we can err on the side of other facilities when we franchise this idea yes. being up to a better standard and therefore entirely safe. Exactly. A little bit of hush money and the people taking the trials don't mention the itching and the pus. So we've been trying it out with some measure of success. People like the idea of lingerie. They can just snap onto themselves like they're dressing a Barbie doll. How much? How much success uh, in in, uh, in numbers? Well, um, it's it's probably easier to point out that one woman took it for a trial out on the town. At one point, tried to hop a guardrail, and it didn't go well. Oh dear! But that problem in itself is a solution because we've realised maybe don't make magnets that strong. Was she was she able to get off the rail? Once they sawed that section of the rail off. Uh huh. How strong are these magnets? Well, she is technically part handrail now. That does seem excessively strong. Effective. It's fine. It's fine. It's it, this is no long lasting effect. We've just got to uh, reverse the polarities on the magnet. She's in uh, a big room with wobbly circles that do things. I don't know how it works. But eventually the magnet's going to lose its strength and it'll just all fall right out of her. And when, I assume, they try to surgically remove the magnet, the scalpels and other metal instruments end up... Oh, yeah, they'd have to use glass. Oh, they'd have to use glass scalpels. They do. Um, yeah. As you all know, I field test everything that we do here at the lab. And right. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> let's just say that uh, if you need any cutlery... Uh, just, just ask my ass. Actually, I was wondering, have you seen my keys? Again, I refer you to the ass. So you've basically become sort of a sexual magneto, able to uh, attract... A kind of, a kind of ass magneto, yes. Ass nido. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, a starting point. It is it's a, a little... side effect. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a marketable effect. in a sense. It's for for certain people. This, like you said, the body modification crowd, the whole torture and die crowd. They they may like it as is, but is there any way we could tone it down a little bit so it's not? Quite I, I as see. Legal? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And to be honest, I have so many Allen keys in my rectum right now that it really is uncomfortable to say sat down for too long. So we'll move on to the next idea. Um, we've been trying different things, different workarounds for the lingerie problem. So how about this? One of the big issues with lingerie is that it takes so much effort to go on for something that's just going to come back off again. And so it's this whole thing of every time I want to wear the lingerie, I've got to spend, like you say, at least 15 minutes putting it on, and then 15 minutes off again, 15 on, 15 off, 15 on, 15 off, it's a whole thing it's like the seventh level of dante's inferno or whichever level involved lingerie well it's not quite that bad but it's it's something it's annoying it's annoying what if i told you there was a way to wear lingerie and never have to worry about putting it on again once it's on different than the magnets this is another absolutely different from the magnets oh good oh sure then maybe yeah Yeah, this one involves a a special chemical compound that fuses the uh, lingerie to the human body at a cellular level. Similarly to how um, polystyrene cement uh, melts uh, two pieces of plastic ever so much to create a durable, almost unbreakable bond. The lingerie goes on and it, 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 it subverts the problem of ever having to wear it again. 
by not allowing it to ever be removed. Yes, yes. Once it's attached itself to the host, and after they've, you know, fingers crossed, coupled successfully, um, they enter into a parasitic relationship uh, where the lingerie uh, feeds off the host's body. Um, there will be some weight loss involved, so this is a potential uh, uh, selling point for anybody who's into fitness as well. Um, it allows you to eat more if you're a greedy person, because those pounds ain't going to you, they're going straight to the bra. Uh, the bra can get fat, so don't eat too much cake. Uh-huh. You use skin glue to permanently attach uh, a garment that eats you? So so the gar- the garment's alive. It, uh, these words like glue, alive, eats, bra... I mean, they're all very charged words. Um, You know, we we prefer to use more marketing-friendly terms like entity, um, unshakable bond, uh, thinking as one with two minds, that sort of thing. So you create a permanent life commitment to something that, uh, you're right, eats isn't the right word, uh... I don't know, consumes you? Consumes your life with sexuality? Less people know what the word consumes means compared to those who know what the word eats means, so that's a word I'd be willing to go with in advertisement disclaimers, yes. Um, The only downside to this is we can only provide this particular line of of sex wear uh, in crotchless form. Otherwise, just defeats the purpose. Well, it would eat your crotch, I would guess, and not necessarily... In a sexual way, in an actual uh, making your crotch be eaten and uh, gone way. Does it make breasts go bye bye too? It doesn't eat. No, it doesn't. It doesn't eat the human body. It augments the human body. Um, but you, of course, have to um, make sure you're e- you're eating for two. Basically, it's like being pregnant. Oh, that's. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So it's basically. All the joys of being pregnant while wearing lingerie that you never while have being to take s- off. Sexy. It's it's like it's like pregnancy just got sexy and a heck of a lot more whispery if you like are really quiet at night and you can hear the bras talking. Oh wow, they actually talk. English? No known language. Oh, so just sounds that they understand. We we think they're trying to communicate, but to be honest, we're too frightened to ask. Yeah, I I, I never want to know. I mean, they look good. I mean, I, I mean, hold on. If I just pull these down here, you're wearing I mean, them. I mean, that looks good, right? That that frames the scrotum nicely. It it really does. It really does. And as you yeah. can notice, there's there's only very minimal swelling in the mons pubis. It's it's certainly frilly. Uh huh. I mean, let me lift. Let me let me lift the sack there. You see under there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You like that? The taint is hugged. Uh, doesn't look as though it hurts to have your uh body consumed or eaten by. Uh, like you said, it's kind of like a baby. That's a sexy perineum. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Sex yeah. pregnancy. I mean, now, baby that perineum. Looks, that looks like lace. Is it? But but it it seems a little more membranous than that. Oh, it's very membranous. Yeah, it does look like the skin's a little broken down there, as though if I pushed hard enough on it, I could just kind of stick my finger into your flesh. Let's not let's not worry about any decomposition. I mean, I I don't even know what that word means. I don't know why I said it. Uh huh. Um, I'm seeing doubt. I'm seeing doubt in you guys again. No, no I mean, it, it, it looks it I've, looks good. It I've does got a third good. idea. Third okay, idea. all right, hit us with it. Okay, put these on. This is for you guys to wear. Put these on as you would a normal oh, pair of glasses. Like, uh, glasses, yeah, okay. Oh, all right. glasses is fine, sure. Oh, um, okay, so what's this is kind of obscuring my vision a little bit. Let me focus. Okay, so that's, uh, I see a bra and panties. Yeah, I mean, hang on, on look at there. me, look at me. Oh, okay, all right, hang on. Hang on. I'm yeah. going to have to step back a bit, right? Yeah. You tell me when it. You tell me when it's Back, aligned. keep going. All right. Keep going. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, all right, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that that lines up. That's about right, yeah. Okay, right. I see. You see, I'm waving my arms. 
And look, I mean, it's it's hot. Yeah, it's it's really hot. I mean, I got to keep my head really still. Yeah, I, I really shouldn't be moving so much either. No, and and okay. I mean, yeah, I see. I see what you're going. You see, with... Hang on, I'm going to come back. You can take them off now. Um, yeah, yeah. You see what we did? We basically. I, I, I'll be honest. We ran out of funding after the magnets and the genetic experiments. Um, so we had a whole bunch of these glasses from the failed Trunculo lens project. Oh, um, okay. I thought we, I recognized those frames. Yeah, we, we had a whole bunch of these useless glasses. We had some enamel paint. Me and Dr. Nightscreen were talking, and he was like, do you just, just want to draw some fucking underwear on these bits of glass? And I was like, yeah, all right. I'm not doing anything till they get the magnets out of me. So we we, ju- we just kind of drew bra and panties on the glasses and figured that that takes I, a lot of the effort out of it you know it, it does it does um it's really only i mean it the effect only works uh at a at a considerable distance from uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah 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 um and you gotta keep your head totally still you can't even jostle or move in any way or else it kind of loses the illusion yeah basically we've only sold one pair to sting Oh, the singer? Yeah. He really liked them. He said that 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 got him to break his record. Um, Otherwise, I will be honest. I... I just... I I, I don't think any of these ideas work. Oh, no. No, no. They're they're good ideas. They're just uh, in the prototype phase. It's just... You you get under a lot of pressure to come up with, like, a new... uh, New things... Like, like I, I had to come up with three new things, and it's just hard every week to come up with three new ideas, right? You're, you're doing that a are engaging job. and entertaining. Yeah, right. yeah. there's Got a lot it. of pressure there. You uh, know, I think you should cut yourself a little slack. What, what if, what if we combine the ideas? You put the glasses on, you see someone sexy from a distance, and then your genetically enhanced panty-covered cock uh, stretches from the magnets. And the person's vagina all the way to make a kind of a, a, a Stretch Armstrong sex parade spaghetti of uh, blood mucus and, and love. You you think that would be a good idea? It might work. I don't, We could try it. You're not just saying that. No, I mean it. I, I really think it could work. Now, don't you feel a whole lot better about yourself, Jim? Yeah, well, I'll get a scalpel and some magnets and... Let, let's make this work. Let's make this work. Hooray! Fist Shark Marketing is Jim Sterling, Conrad Zimmerman, and Paul Sincere. Theme music by Ben Rama. Additional music by Alazar Chan. Our editor is Alan Smithy. Get more episodes and learn how to support the show at fistshark.com. Follow us on Twitter at FistShark for more of our exploits. Complaints can be forwarded via email to FistSharkMarketing at AOL.com. And remember, nougat is not part of a moral center. Goodbye.